Hey everybody, it's Lavender Town, and today I'm going to be talking about my biggest pet peeves when it comes to manga. So these are not things that are inherently wrong or anything, but these are just things that kind of like rub me the wrong way, and I was wondering if any of you guys had the same thing. Um, so the first one I want to talk about is the phenomenon that was previously known as yaoi hands, um, but it's basically just when the male characters in manga sometimes have like freakishly huge hands. Uh, now this is just a stylization thing, it's not like wrong, but um, I just find that it can be quite unsettling, especially in romantic scenes where the characters are like caressing the face of, you know, someone they care about and their hand is just like completely um, like... Uh, smothering and eclipsing the uh, the features of the other character. The other thing about this phenomenon is a lot of the times it comes paired with a weird level of detail on the hands and, and just like strange segmentations in the fingers. Now uh, to be fair like drawing hands is incredibly hard. I think a lot of artists feel that it's like one of the more difficult things to draw. Um, so some of this might be a legitimate mistake, some of this is just stylization, but um, for me it always takes me out a little bit when they go too far with it. Honestly, I think they're at their worst when um, they're trying to make the fingers like really long and slender. You get into sort of a solid fingersy, uh, sort of Coraline-esque territory, um, and it could start to get kind of creepy looking. Which is obviously not what you want when you're trying to draw a romantic scene or create a character that people are going to like, you know, like. Um, so uh, yeah, I think that's why this trope is especially like jarring is because it always shows up when the character is supposed to be like really appealing and the scene's supposed to be really cute and then he comes up to the character with these shovels for hands and I just can't help but think that um, I would be a little unsettled if someone could palm my head like a basketball um <laughs> so yeah it's probably one of the like most classic complaints about um, manga stylization uh so i had to throw it in here as the first one because it's just it's iconic it's it's tradition um <laughs> the yaoi hand it, it will never die Next up is the Scourge of Shoujo Manga. This is more of a writing thing rather than a drawing thing, but one of the tropes that I personally can't stand is when the couple of the story features one girl who's very sweet and like her whole personality is around like being gentle and nice, and then she ends up falling in love with like the most like nuclear level like literal threat to humanity like nightmare of a person like uh usually he's the popular boy he's incredibly arrogant and he's just like relentlessly mean to her for the like the first segment of the story usually the way they try to redeem him is that she's like being attacked by bullies or just random people on the street and he will like save her and then she'll see the good in him or whatever um, but sometimes it's literally just that like he's just a terrible guy but um, she either is like sassy to him unlike everyone else and that makes him like realize the error of his ways or she just like sticks it out with him and keeps being nice to him even though he's horrible to her <laughs> Um, and gradually that like softens his heart and he becomes a marginally better person but for me personally I find that this these stories are like extremely frustrating because um, these girl characters just don't deserve that and so it's not very romantic or fun to read in my opinion um, I get the whole enemies to lovers trope but I think that it's more compelling when they actually have a reason to be enemies other than the fact that the guy just like sucks really bad <laughs> um, so that's one of the things that I really don't enjoy um, there are so many examples of this uh, like I said a lot of the time sometimes the girl is not like just you know super soft and pliable sometimes she pushes back sometimes you know she's the only one who will stand up to him because she's not as dazzled by his popularity and handsomeness as everyone else and she's not like other girls but either way I just think that like having this like really wonderful um, female character fall in love with these like crusty dusty horrible personality boys all the time is just really frustrating <laughs> I'm actually so sensitive to this trope that I don't even like um, Kyo and Toru together from Fruits Basket, which is a pretty well-beloved uh, couple, and he's not really that bad, but um, his like constant anger issues and shouting at everybody really made me want her to end up with Yuki instead, so uh, that's an indication I think of how much this is a pet peeve to me. But again, no hate if you're into this trope. 
This next one might be my most controversial opinion of the entire video, um, and it's because this is actually like a really good time-saving trick, and I completely understand why manga artists use it, especially under the deadlines that they often are, but for me, I really don't like when um, the like main character art of a story is really stylized and it has like a really unique sort of hand-drawn look to it. Um, it looks really like personal to the artist who made it. Um, this is something that I love in manga and I'm always sad when they like polish up the art so much in like anime adaptations that you lose some of that. Um, the, one of my favorite things about manga art is the weird and interesting stylization you can get on the characters. And then sometimes a lot of artists, especially if the story is based in like real life and they can just take pictures of like Tokyo or something like that, they just like take photographs and like posterize them and put them in the background. So instead of drawing a background, they will use like some photography that either they took or is like a stock photo that is free to use um, to put a filter over it and then that's the background. This doesn't look bad by any stretch of the imagination, and I'm sure it saves like hours and hours um, of the manga artist's time. So again, completely understandable, but just for me, um, I really love stylization, and so when I see a really stylized character, I would love to see them in a stylized environment too. Um, you know, there are environment artists out there who do such incredible work and can make such like interesting and, and full of character spaces for their characters to live in. Um, and I always kind of miss that when a uh, manga artist is mainly just using this uh, photography method. Now, one thing that I've seen people do that I think works really well as sort of an in-between is sometimes a manga artist will take a photo, um, do that sort of like posterize or like line art kind of thing, and then work off of that. So you, they don't have to like build the composition and the perspective and everything from scratch, but they can still add in some of that like hand-drawn touch to the backgrounds so that they sort of like blend a little bit better with the characters and the objects um, because it can be really really jarring I think and it just to me it just doesn't look as good as it could it doesn't fulfill its full potential it completely works but it's not like it, it takes some of the like flavor away from the overall art I think the other big problem with doing it this way is that it doesn't allow you to put in little like in jokes or like more specific uh, environments for your characters. I feel like sometimes it literally pushes people to place their stories in the same places over and over because they're like easily accessible, there's lots of photography of them, or they're like close to the artist. So, so many manga happens to be set in Tokyo, um, but I feel like I, I wonder sometimes if the story might be served better if they could make it a completely like original environment for these characters to be in. Because sometimes I feel like I'm seeing the same scenes over and over and over, especially in stories where the environment isn't like the key. And I wonder sometimes if like the stories would be more interesting if you weren't constantly seeing like Shibuya Station or um, The Crossing or, you know, the 109 Mall, you know, it's like, <laughs> it just makes things a little bit more generic feeling. And I think that that's a little sad. The last and worst manga trope in my opinion, and this is just, <laughs> this is not really a trope, but something I wanted to talk about is the way that manga artists are overworked um, and the pressure that they're put under to produce a certain amount of pages in a very short time. Um, now there is a huge problem of overwork when it comes to especially serialized manga um, and I think that it is one of those things that's going to have to change on like a whole industry level. Um, now it's not to say that people aren't overworked in like the arts field in you know America or wherever but I know that um, manga artists in particular have grueling schedules a lot of the time and I think that a lot of the like weird little art mistakes and things happen because there is just so little time to produce a page and I think that a lot of manga artists have really serious like health problems later in life because they are expected to work so much. Um, this is famously a schedule that a manga artist um, put up that basically shows that they had almost no time to do anything other than sleep, eat, and draw. And I just think that that's, that's no way to live, especially for an entertainment property. It shouldn't be like you know, it shouldn't be more grueling hours than like an ER surgeon or something like it's, you know, it's it's just comics. Like, I, I think that it's 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 morally wrong for these uh, publishers and like industry people to be pushing people so hard just to get a chapter out. Um, 
you know, in, in, a, in a book. And I'm not sure exactly how they could change this. Obviously, manga magazines are still a huge part of the industry and they need to come out on time. But I do think that like um, the way that things are going and the, and the way that a lot of manga artists like um, suffer with like serious you know, medical issues, there, you know, something has to change basically. Um, and I think it's important to remember in all like art jobs and art entertainment things, like if you're ever in a job and you feel like you don't even have time to like sleep and eat normally, like you need to like step away because I feel like a lot of industry people sometimes take advantage of the fact that this is your passion and it's such a hard to like get into job that a lot of people are willing to sacrifice so much, but you can really shorten your your life career if you work that hard at the start. I also think the stories of manga get severely damaged by the fact that a lot of the time the artists don't really get to decide when they end. This is something that happens in television too, um, but uh, basically like you can be told to keep going past the point that the manga was originally like planned to stop and i feel like you can really tell that sometimes especially in like shonen jump properties uh when an artist is like treading water and trying to figure out how to keep a story going when it actually already had a natural ending point that would have been most satisfying so yeah basically just like the industry you know tormenting manga artists and and um messing with their stories in an unnecessary and unhelpful way for continued money I guess. Um, that's probably the thing that bothers me most in the manga industry. Um, but yeah, let me know if you guys have any like weirdly specific pet peeves about manga. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one. Thank you to all of my patrons including Ventali, Sniper, JP25, Lucy Amajiki, Heartless Doll, Fin Must Die, Aries Chaos, Live Live, Salty Jackrabbit, New Smilk, Raven's Crow, Sasalot, T Hill Music, Jabber Dabber Do, Gender Was Stolen, K Moo Milk, Kadaria, Deadly Nightshade Art, Astral Fox Art, Expressive Poker Face, Subaki, Michael Lavalie, Cutie Pie, Rune Rain Crow, Ice Cream Pal, Kola, JJ Jade, and of course, Libla Libla.